I like to work on the leading edge or the bleeding edge. The biggest challenge when you like to live way out there, pushing the envelope, is getting buy-in from people that your ideas merit resources. It's exciting. Uh, no two days are the same, which is very important to me. I get to travel a lot. So I've gone to the Canadian Arctic and parts of Europe, the US, to work with my collaborators. So I like being part of this global community. I didn't have as many uh, female role models when I was growing up. I had, I guess, mainly male role models because that's all that was available and visible. May is an amazing role model. She works with each of us to figure out what we want, whether that's a technical perspective, whether that's professionally, whether that's personally, and tries to highlight ideas of where we could take that in different ways in order to better our whole selves rather than just individual components of ourselves. The technical things I've achieved, I'm quite proud of, right? This is the reason why I come to work. So the contributions that I can make that are documented in uh, papers and book chapters. I'm also interested in STEM outreach. So I'm quite proud of the grad students that I've had the privilege to work with and learn from as well, because they carry that impact forward into the future for me. And then the, uh, the impact that I also have with the younger ages. When we were at a national camp in Guelph, um, May was instrumental in the development of the uh, science programming that was at that event. And one of the key things that she brought and was able to coordinate was the conversation with the space station. I can only imagine the, the uh, experience that would have been for the 3,000 girls that were at that camp as well especially for the five or eight girls that sat on the stage and were actually dialoguing with the astronauts in the space station. It's just a wonderful experience and that's what May brings to our organization. I would run Girl Guide camps to have them explore engineering, and not just engineering, but all the STEM. Then I would hear back from them later when they're adults or when they're in university or much further along and they would say that the event I did and perhaps the the sessions that I did really motivated them. This is what they wanted to do. This was a turning point in what in helping them decide. Hearing back about that and knowing that you've had impact in, in a life in, in a positive way, that's, that's strong motivation. And it's not just the girl guides I hear back from. I hear back from the uh, graduate students that I've inspired as well. She's done everything. She's a, a world-renowned researcher. She's a, she's a very humble person. She's a, a dedicated volunteer. She's a mentor to so many that I, I lost count. So what impresses me is how broad her life has been and how broad her contribution has been. I think it's important that women are, are at the table. It's good for creative problem solving. And it's just good to have multiple views and different ways of doing things. And I'm big on getting people interested in engineering to consider it. So if there are women in engineering who want to be in engineering and they feel a role model is necessary or they, they feel more, a more personal connection is necessary, I'm happy to provide that. May is resilient through and through. She is methodical. She is even keeled. She is intentional about everything she does. She sees the big picture but doesn't lose any of the technical details as she goes through it. It's really quite impressive how she balances those two. May is probably the most selfless person that I know. She is always giving of herself. She likes to see the magic that happens within the girl's eyes when they get that new skill.